So uh, the EREZ Hempcrete system we purchased originally from Hempitecture in 2019, following the USM Building Summit. Um, we executed the first residential spray application of Hempcrete in the United States in 2020 in Missouri with Hempitecture at that time. Uh, and about the end of 2020, uh, those guys had pivoted obviously pretty hard toward Temple uh, and at least the agreement to me. So I took over and forged a licensing and distribution agreement with Damien uh, in 2021. And we are currently reproducing uh, the Ereasy equipment here in the United States now and training uh, new operators. So more on that later, but um, just a couple images to give you an idea. Um, there's Damien down on the bottom left there, uh, spraying wall off a man lift. Myself very late at night, trying to finish a wall before some impending weather. Uh, and then a look at the equipment that we use there. So um, some of y'all may have seen Ray's mixer, it's the same one we use, it's a mud hog, 20 cubic foot horizontal shaft paddle mixer, mortar mixer, if you will. And then that air compressor is what creates uh, the suction to deliver this material to the wall. So um, this was designed by Damien in 2014. Uh, the interesting thing about this particular spray application method is that we are actually pre-mixing the materials, herd, binder, water, uh, all those are mixed in the mortar mixer, just like uh, you would for cast in place, which allows you uh, more control over the mix. Uh, and then they're introduced to the wall wet via a 375 CFM air compressor, um, which again, drives the suction at the lance to deliver the material. Uh, it's a very lightweight dosage of binder to herd. It's part of the magic of why this machine works the way that it does. Um, 75 kilograms per cubic meter. To put that in perspective for you, a typical cast in place mix is often in excess of 200 kilograms per cubic meter of binder um, is what that, that measurement means there. So you can see we have a very lightweight uh, initial density, but our finished product density, interestingly, uh, is much closer to um, a cast in place mix than that number would have you believe. So um, our finished density is around 16 pounds per cubic foot, whereas a cast in place mix is anywhere from 18 to about 25 or, you know, even as much as 30, depending on what you're doing with it, pounds per cubic foot. Um, so even though we have that lightweight binder to herd ratio, um, again, part of the magic of the system, uh, we do end up with very much what you would consider a hempcrete, uh, but it's a little bit more performant. Um, not much. Tom and I have talked about this a lot. Um, but you know, when you hear people talking about minute differences in, you know, vapor permeability of different binder mixes, things like that, um, they really are minute and we have very little data on the ground to support that there's any real, um, you know, functional difference. Uh, that said, we have done the C518 test. I'll talk about that a little bit more. So we have documented our thermal performance, um, but very few, if anybody else has really done that here yet. Tom did do some work. Um, with Jennifer on a bunch of binders early on. Uh, but again, we're the first to get an ASTM certification for the R value for this equipment. So uh, four people to run it uh, gets you max productivity. Uh, and the results with this machine are a very consistent and even placement density. So you'll see in my work, um, there is an, the absence of that beautiful stratigraphy that you see uh, in cast in place, which again is... is um, you know, gorgeous to look at, but is uh, evidence of the human element, right? Like you can almost read uh, in a cast in place wall when uh, people had had a cup of coffee or when they're tired after lunch, you can sort of see um, a little bit of density changes. Overall in a cast in place wall, those density changes are gonna be pretty uniform. Um, so the reality is, is that, you know, we outperform uh, a cast in place mix by maybe 0.2 to 0.4 uh, R per inch. So again, we're not talking about dramatic differences. This is still very much hempcrete. I want to be clear about that. And I also want to be clear, like I said last time that, you know, I am not, I do not turn my nose up at any, any method for installing hempcrete. They are all valid. So please know that. Um, we do get a very high productivity rate on site. That is one thing about the spray application that you'll find. Um, we can do a house uh, in anywhere from five to eight days that would take, you know, sometimes in excessive of a month to do by hand, uh, depending on a great many factors, obviously. So talk more about that. Uh, again, there's a link on our website. If you go to our, our webpage, uh, marishom.com, uh, you'll find a link to this report. 
this was compiled by Jacob Waddell with the Hemp Building Institute. Uh, we created samples with the Ereasy spray application method, uh, sprayed them, and then tested them uh, for ASTM C518 at a lab in Tennessee, RD Services. Uh, and again, we got back 2.2 per inch, which makes it so that we, surprisingly, um, you are actually, uh, by the FTC, Federal Trade Commission rules, not allowed to advertise uh, any building material as having an insulation value without having done tests like this. So um, that never stopped any of us before in getting a project approved with Hemcrete. So just kind of tuck that in your hat for maybe later down the road when uh, you might be trying to put together a larger business around supplying materials. Um, but for now, again, that's that's kind of a, an inconsequential detail. It's just something that um, in the position that we're in now that I wanted to make sure that we had that T cross um, so. 2.2 per inch. Um, a few shots of our projects. Many of you have probably seen our work online. Um, we've been very fortunate to get in front of a great deal of work thanks to, uh, you know, in no small part, um, our colleagues at Hempstone. Many of these are co-projects that we've done uh, with Hempstone. And again, many of them are original. Uh, most of our clients are motivated, capable homeowner builders, such as many of you in this room, uh, and they do not fit a type. Um, the only similarity is that they're uh, motivated and capable. So, um, uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's our typical interaction with a client is that we, we get in front of people who had been considering doing uh, cast in place in a project uh, often and then decide to incorporate spray application. Um, a few of these I have been a part of, of coming up with the details. Um, but again, this just makes it uh, a reality for people who have a time constraint. So you can hire us in like a normal contractor and we're out of your hair in a week. Um, you know, and again, that does not mean that the community aspect of doing a cast in place build over a longer period of time is invalid. It's very much valid. So um quickly project pa hemp home this was really you know the first original residential project of my own um was a restoration of a united home in newcastle pa with hempcrete by the don group of companies funded in part by the pennsylvania department of agriculture very fortunate here in pennsylvania to have a very supportive department of agriculture uh who wants to demonstrate obviously the opportunity for farmers uh and also uh how hemp can be worked into and the performance benefits of Hemp Creek can be worked into affordable housing. So this is a collaboration with Amerishamp, Parsons Healthy Materials Lab, Pennsylvania Housing Research Center at Penn State, Maine, uh, and with support from UK Hemp Creek, Alex Sparrow. So um, the, the, the hemp wood in the floor, too, is actually from uh, bales that Lori and Don Services grew. They sent them down to Greg, or actually he came and picked them up, uh, and they turned them into flooring for the, for the floor. So there is original... PA grown hemp in that home. Now, the, the, the point of this project, again, was to document a few things uh, like the interior air quality and the thermal performance. Um, very excitingly, this, this report is now available on the PHRC website. You can all take a look at that. Um, Parsons found, uh, as far as interior air quality, uh, a 400 plus percent reduction in free formaldehyde as compared to um, a traditional modern track builder, new construction home. That alone is, is an astounding figure. Um, every material in this home was chosen for its material health and its uh, low toxicity, uh, and, and it really registered in the final product. Um, PHRC, Pennsylvania Housing Research Center, then did a study uh, and confirmed what we've all really been telling people for a long time, that there was about a 30 to 70% reduction in heating and cooling costs um, based on the infield performance monitoring that was done after the retrofit of this home versus modeling that PHRC did on the original state of the home. So that modeling was based on traditional insulation and heating numbers that they were able to input because obviously they have good data points for those. They don't yet have data points for hempcrete. So finding a way to tie in uh, the research to any project that you guys are doing. Always talk to the universities nearby, nonprofits, things like that, who might be interested in uh, finding a way to get some money to do the performance documentation. We are very light on the ground with that in the United States. So um, before and after shot, beautiful hallway shot. Um, Tim, I got to give Tim a shout out. Um, Don hired me to be the plasterer 
out of desperation. I did it kicking and screaming. Um, we did a hand applied uh, hemp and lime plaster that was taught to me by Anthony Neron at Duchamp. By and large, it went on pretty well. Uh, they had a few issues, namely the, the largest issue was a batch that had gone moldy. Uh, and as Tim pointed out with good sage advice, the mix could stand to have a little bit of sand. So uh, Tim fortunately came up uh, after I was there. We had gotten the first floor done. They were working on the second floor and sort of struggling a bit. Uh, and Tim came to save the day. So thank you again for that, Tim. You can see what a beautiful finish it turned out to be with the advice of a real plaster in Tim. Um, it came out very nicely. So they, they ended up having a great result with this, all things considered. Uh, and now there is a woman living in this home uh, who, is, who was able to move in at a subsidized rate and only paid about $40,000 on her mortgage to live here. So really cool project. It all came together. Um, beautiful materials. Again, all healthy. Every single stitch, uh, every, every material in that home was chosen for um, its its health, including the wood that the cabinets were made out of and the tile and obviously the hemp wood with a soy based binder. So that all registers. That's a linseed oil paint on the trim. Um, if you do all of these things, you really will have a healthy home. Uh, collaborations, I won't go too deep into this. Um, just to say at the bottom here that we now have 10 individual EREZ owner operators across the United States. Um, over 150 people have been trained on site, and of those, 25 are certified EREZ spray application technicians who have come and taken the training at our warehouse in Pennsylvania. Uh, Ray is uh, actually was part of our inaugural class uh, and was there as Tom and the other band of hempcrete warriors were delivering the index to the committee in New York the day that we did this training that Ray was there. So really cool moment that brought all that together. Um, since then, now we have an EREZ owner operator, most notably in Massachusetts, who is doing um, the first low rise multifamily condo complex permitted uh, in the United States. And uh, they are the Hillside Center for Sustainable Living. Uh, check them out. That's an easy website to find too. Um, and again, that's Hall in Moscow, one of our EREZ owner operators. So um, just a brief shot to show you how many cool and amazing people I've met all over the place. Certainly not everybody in this picture. Um, and yeah, I'll stop there. Uh, and if anybody has any questions, you want to put them in the chat so we can keep rolling through the, uh, the content here for tonight uh, and get into some, uh, some, some wins, and, wins and losses on the battlefield with Hemcrete, right, Ray? Ha, ha, ha.